So many choose to go to university to delve more into a subject they love, to continue to expand their mind and gain new skills, to make new friends and exercise greater independence, and to help improve their career prospects. The choice is not an easy one and extremely personal to you. Remember that no one else should be able to make it for you. When it comes to applying to Oxbridge, you may have been dreaming about it for years, somewhat curious or completely undecided. Let us help you out by opening your eyes to some of the things that make Oxbridge unique. Number one, the collegiate system. At Oxbridge, not only a member of the university, but also your college and department. Colleges are often where you are accommodated, attend some of your classes and can get involved in lots of extracurricular activities. For many, their college can become a home away from home. Number two, the tutorial or supervision system. This involves small group teaching with a tutor and usually one to three students once or twice a week. It can be an intense but highly effective way of learning. And number three, ranking. Oxford and Cambridge are consistently ranked top in the world for universities. They are also both members of the UK Russell Group, reflecting their prioritisation of cutting edge research. Often, when people explain why they're discouraged from applying to Oxbridge, they make many of the same arguments such as, number one, getting into Oxbridge is impossible. I'm not good enough. Number two, Oxbridge is all work and no play. Students have no social life and the workload is unmanageable. Number three, I'm not the Oxbridge type. I would never fit in or find my people. And number four, life at Oxbridge is really stressful. I can never cope with the pressure. Have a think. Have you ever heard or said any of these things? Well, these arguments are common misconceptions that circulate among potential applicants, stopping far too many from applying or really committing to their application. Throughout the course of today's workshop, we hope to challenge each misconception one by one. Finance is often a concern, but Oxbridge tuition fees are no higher than any other UK university. And there are several great bursaries available to help cover maintenance fees, including the Crankstart Scholarship, which offers you a non-repayable bursary of up to £5,000 each year. We will include links to some useful sites which approximate the average cost of living for Oxford and Cambridge in the Zoom chat. Numan and I are now going to address the myth about the impossibility of getting into Oxbridge by explaining the application process and how you can make the strongest application possible. Okay, so here's how the event's going to work today. Firstly, Zoe and I are going to talk to you for about 15 to 20 minutes on the application process. Then we're going to let you free into our breakout rooms. There's 22 of them. Each breakout room should have about 15 to 20 students. And there'll be four or five mentors there to give you uh, advice and support with this application process. They're going to be answering questions that we've pre-prepared for them, uh, busting those common myths and dealing with questions that you've pre-submitted through the Google form all that you have uh, today. Uh, if you have any questions today, as I say, please put them in the Zoom chat function or through the Google form, which we will provide again. Okay, let's get started. So the application process is pretty simple. It's got three stages most of the time. Firstly, you have your personal statement. Secondly, you may have um, for Oxbridge an assessment such as the BMAT or the TSA. Um, and thirdly, you may uh, if everything's going very well, you should hopefully have an interview. We're going to talk to you a little bit uh, in detail about either, each of these stages, but I just point out uh, that I've got a little asterisk there because for some of you, you may have to provide written work as part of your application. Um, that is for select courses, so please check online uh, whether that applies to you, but it, in most cases it won't, so we won't go into too much detail about that today. If you have suspicions, uh, if you have specific questions about it, of course, feel free to ask in the panel discussion. Okay, and here's the timeline for that. So your personal statement will need to be in by mid-October. I think it's 15th October. It was for us anyway, um, but you can check the exact date uh, later in the year. Now that is a bit earlier than uh, all of your friends who aren't applying to Oxford or Cambridge. Uh, so maybe it might be a little bit more stressful for you guys but it is very nice feeling to have it out of the way quite early. Then you have your exam. Now that 
Timing will depend a great deal because it depends on the particular exam you sit, but most are in about October, November. Okay, medicine ones might be a bit earlier. And then finally, your interview, which uh, is usually in November, December time as well. Though again, medicine uh, interviews, because there's so many of them, uh, their timing can vary significantly. So personal statements. A personal statement is a short essay about why you are interested in and well suited for studying your chosen course. It is your opportunity to sell yourself to the university and to put your best foot forward. An Oxbridge personal statement is a little different from other personal statements in that it should be predominantly focused on academics. The ratio that many people refer to when writing their personal statement is 80% academic and 20% extracurricular. It is not uncommon to rewrite your personal statement five to 10 times to make a competitive application. You should try to get multiple opinions from different teachers detailed feedback is key. The first draft of my personal statement looked completely different to the final version that I submitted to UCAS. So what should the academic section of your personal statement include? Firstly, it is a good idea to talk about how each of your A-level or IB subjects inform your understanding of your chosen course. Ask yourself, are there any key lessons, ideas or skills which can be applied? The links may not be obvious, but can be a key differentiator between you and other applicants, because they demonstrate your ability to find synergies in your life and your learning, which is admirable in any Oxbridge student. Secondly, you ought to be talking about your supercurriculars. This is a term used to refer to the ways in which you have explored your chosen course outside of the classroom and beyond the school curriculum. Examples include, but are not limited to, reading books or articles, doing an EPQ, listening to talks and podcasts, watching documentaries, completing an online course, visiting museums and attending summer schools. Passion for your subject need not and indeed must not be explicitly stated. For example, rather than saying, I am really passionate about geography, you should imply your passion through discussion of your supercurriculars. You can quite easily find reading lists for your course online. You can also look at the modules offered by your course and do your own research into a particular topic. Finding a niche interest can make you stand out from the crowd and provides a great talking point to interviews. When introducing any extracurriculars, such as work experience, volunteering or sports, you should be careful to only mention those which you can explicitly link to your course. Consider the unique insight or skills which they can provide you. Don't worry about not having had loads of or indeed any work experience. Reflect on what you have done. This could be as simple as an observation whilst traveling, reading the news, or even just walking in your local area. So here are five general tips to consider when writing your personal statement. Number one, avoid cliches. Tutors don't want to hear how you have always wanted to go to Oxbridge or have loved your subject since birth. It just doesn't sound genuine. Instead, number two, be specific. If you're excited about learning more at university, tell the tutors about what in particular. If you have loved studying your subject at A-level, tell them what topic was most fascinating and why. Number three, don't try and teach the tutor. Consider them as the expert Instead, give your personal opinion on what you have done, read or listened to. This will be far more interesting. Number four, be concise. There is a very strict limit on the number of characters you may use, so don't over elaborate or conversely list every single experience that you've ever had. Put forward your most interesting ideas. If the tutor wants to know more, then they will initiate a discussion at interviews. And finally, number five, do not include anything in your personal statement that you cannot talk about when questioned at interviews. That is to say, please do not pretend you have read something when you haven't. It will not end well. Admissions tests. Admissions tests are used to assess your aptitude for your chosen course and to try and level the playing field among applicants who may be taking different end of school exams. Again, not all courses will require that you take an admissions test, 
so you should double check the requirements for your specific course. Some people will try and tell you that there is no way to prepare for the admissions test, but getting comfortable with the format and the style of questions asked is invaluable. Make a plan and start preparing early. Here's what you could do to prepare for the admissions test. You could find past papers online to practice with under timed conditions. You could refer to the mark schemes and ask a teacher to provide you with more personalized feedback to help you learn from your mistakes. And you could rewrite your answers to help you consolidate on your learning. It is important to remember that tutors are testing not how much you know, but rather how you think, analyze, criticize, and utilize other fundamental skills. They want to see how you approach the unknown. Here are three top tips for taking the admissions test. Number one, bring highlighters and annotate longer questions or extracts whilst reading. It will save you precious time. Number two, when writing your answers, keep referring back to the question to make sure that you're not getting sidetracked. And number three, keep an eye on the clock. Work out timings ahead of the test and don't spend too long on any one question. Okay, uh, if everything has gone really well, you should hopefully now be invited for an interview. Now, this is perhaps the most uh, scary part of the application process. So I want you guys to be really comfortable and know what you need to do. Okay, what is the tutor looking for in the interview? We think it's two things in particular. Number one, passion. They want to see that you're someone who's excited about your subject. And secondly, teachability. They want to see if you're someone that they want in their classroom. It's really important to view the interview as a conversation rather than as an interrogation. And there's some things you can do to really improve your performance. Firstly, practice. Practice as much as possible and with anyone who will listen. It makes an enormous amount of difference because it means that you feel more comfortable with the format. It means you get better at expressing your thoughts uh, effectively and structuring them well. And it means that you get better at uh, being articulate and feeling calm under pressure. It really helps to practice. So just get in the habit of talking uh, with your parents, with your friends about your subject. Um, if you've got a friend that's applying to Oxbridge, a great thing to do is to, uh, you know, October, September time, uh, form a sort of club together or just meet regularly to give each other practice interviews. It really helps. Or ask your teachers to give you one too or use a uni reach platform. Secondly, know your personal statement. It's really important that everything in your personal statement are things that you feel comfortable talking about and that you feel excited talking about. So as Zoe says, don't include anything that you wouldn't want to talk about at interview. And once your personal statement's been sent off, make sure that you know there's nothing that you've forgotten about that you're, you're less aware of. Make sure you're keeping top of everything in that personal statement. Um, because some tutors like to ask, uh, let's say, about a book that you've read, perhaps it's something that they wrote or that they're really passionate about. So they might ask you about it, or sometimes they're a little bit cheeky and they want to check if you've lied. Um, they're not going to give you a quiz, but they might ask you to describe a book, say, and if you can't do that, it will not look good. OK, thirdly, engage with your subject. So all of those things that Zoe's talking about that make a good personal statement help you to do great at interview. Keep reading uh, those books, keep reading the newspaper, keep listening to podcasts, engaging with your subject as much as possible. It really helps you stand out or interview because it means that you can talk about your subject in broad terms. It means that you're more prepared. Uh, it's really hard to predict the kinds of questions you'll get at interview. But if you have a broader understanding of your subject, that means that if they ask you something, you're more likely to, to know something similar or to know something around the topic that will mean that you perform better at interview. Fourthly, figure out how you think. Now, personally, I think this is the best advice I've ever received um, about how to prepare for my interview. Uh, it was from a student in the year above me who, studied, who was studying law at Cambridge. And she said to me, figure out how you think. Now, for her, that meant uh, using mind maps. Uh, now, it's a little bit hard to use mind maps in the interview. Depending on your subject and how comfortable you feel, you might be able to ask, uh, the tutor can have a piece of paper to draw something out. Um, but if not, 
try to form a mental mind map if that's something that works for you. For me, figuring out how I think meant keep asking myself the question why. So if you think of the example interview question, why do prisons exist? So I would first say, okay, maybe prisons exist because it's really important to punish, uh, you know, to punish people, right? But then you say, well, why do we punish people? We punish people perhaps for a deterrent or perhaps uh, to prevent future crimes or perhaps for some other reason, right? And so in that way, figuring out how your thought process works means that you can articulate it in a much more structured and um, you know, uh, persuasive way during the interview. OK, and let's give some advice for what you should be doing during the interview. Number one, you should be thinking out loud. The interviewer wants to see your thought process and they don't want to be seeing you jump steps. So it's not about getting the right answer. Often these questions are really difficult and they don't think, you know, that you will be able to get the right answer. Sometimes there is no right answer. For example, you know, a question I had in my philosophy interview was actually a paradox. There is no right answer. They just want to see how you think. So it's really important that you're thinking out loud, showing them your thought process. Secondly, if you don't know, ask. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't understand the question, if it was phrased in a way that you, you didn't really get, or if you have some kind of other question, ask it. This is what they're, they're looking for. They're not looking for students who, you know, don't understand the question, but then try to, to figure it out anyway, right? Because you're not going to make a very good student if you're not able to ask your teacher when you need help. Thirdly, be engaged, flexible, and open-minded. So this is all about those things I'm talking about in being a really good student. Be engaged, okay? Listen really carefully to what the tutor is saying and show that you're interested, that you're passionate about uh, this subject, you like talking about it. And be flexible and open-minded. So it's an important balance to be, uh, to be struck in the interview between holding strong to your arguments, but also being flexible and open-minded. So what do we mean by this? What I mean is, let's say with that example question, why do prisons exist? And you say, oh, it's to punish people and we punish people because we, we want to prevent future crimes, right? We want it to act as a deterrent. Then the tutor might say, well, actually, I think punish, you know, we have prison system because we want to affirm some important social values about what is right and what is wrong. And at that point, you have to ask yourself, do I keep arguing my point? Or do I allow the tutor to, do I concede and say the tutor is right? So what you should be doing is constantly asking yourself, um, do I have good reason to support my point of view? If you do have good reason, you know, explain why and explain why you still think you're right. If you no longer have good reasons to support your view, then say, you know, actually, I think you're right, uh, sir, miss, or, or madam, uh, and say, I'll go with what you're saying that makes sense for X, Y, Z because that shows you're a good student, you're one that can learn in the classroom and accept when your thought process is off track. Fourthly, structure your thoughts. It's really important that you're articulating yourself clearly in an, and in an understandable way. Uh, I think this is one of the most important things and what differentiates uh, good candidates and really good candidates is how well-structured and clear their answers are. So think of it like an essay. Before you write an essay, you come up with a plan. So when you get the question, spend 30, 40 seconds, uh, maybe even longer, waiting, thinking, coming up with a plan in your head before you speak. So on that example question again, why do prisons exist? You might think, OK, so it's to punish people, it's a deterrent, it's to affirm social values. Right, I've got three, three ideas already. But before I say them, I'm going to come up with that list. I'm going to start my answer saying, OK, I think there are three reasons why prisons exist. Firstly, this. Secondly, this, thirdly, this. And that's so much more impressive than just coming up with one or just coming up uh, with all three, but in an unorganized way. And finally, listen. Uh, I said it already, but I'll say it again. Please, please listen during the interview. Uh, this is one of the, you know, you can't be a good student if you can't hear your teacher uh, and what they're saying. And so if you are misunderstanding a question, ask. If you mishear a question, ask. Um, but please, please listen really carefully in the interview. And another reason why that's really important is because often their questions will have a key word in them or something that needs to be thought about in more detail, something that can be analysed in multiple ways. Um, you know, particularly if it's a law interview, a humanities interview, um, there might be a word in their question that
that has conflicted meanings. So listen carefully, try and spot those kinds of things. Okay, I hope that was really helpful for you guys. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to give each of our partner organizations to talk a little bit about um, what they're offering to you guys and the ways that they can help you moving forward with your application. So first up, uh, Unipair. Hi, so, uh, it's Joe there too, yeah. Okay, I'll just start off quickly. Uh, so Joe and I are from Unipair. Uh, we're mainly Oxford focused at the moment. Um, and so uh, our main main thing is we uh, take applications from any students uh, applying to Oxford, to any course, to any college and all that. Uh, and we'll look to spend a lot of time getting to know you and really pair you with a mentor from Oxford at the moment who's going to stick with you through the whole application process and hopefully uh, into the time that you arrive at Oxford too, so that they can sort of miss bus for you um, and really get to know you and help you with all your questions and applications and things like that. Uh, Joe, do you have anything to add there? Sure. Yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, as James explained, what we do is your mentor will be with you from the moment you start planning your personal statement all the way through to helping you prep for interviews and <laughs> help you sort of integrate to Oxford when you hopefully get your offer. We're really proud that 60 percent of our students received offers to Oxford this year and 80 percent received an interview, which, uh, yeah, we're really proud of. And we really make we think that's down to the fact that we really make personal mentor and mentee pairings who work really hard to make sure that your mentee is a perfect fit for you. And we also have a bank of universal resources like personal statements um, that you can look to not just from your mentor, but across the board from all of our mentors. And we have a lot of partner organizations as well that provide you with attendance to free events that you'd otherwise might have to pay hundreds of pounds for. Um, so there's more to it than just your mentor there. But um, I'll drop the link in the chat uh, for our website in case you're interested. Awesome. Thanks, Joe and Joanna. So, James and Joanna, sorry. Um, and now, uh, Insight Outreach. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma, and I'm a representative for Insight Outreach. So we're a charity who run the Oxbridge Mentoring Scheme, where essentially you are paired with a mentor and they carry you throughout the process. It's a 10-month course, and they'll help you with your personal statement, with interview practice and um, kind of helping you find extracurricular things that would help you stand out in your application. Unfortunately, our application round has just closed. However, we still have loads and loads of free resources online that you guys can use. So if you look at our Instagram, at Insight Outreach, we have student takeovers, we have um, takeovers from people in the industry and Q and A's where you can um, kind of engage with us and find out more about Oxford and maybe any potential career paths you want to take. If you look at our YouTube, which is also Insight Outreach, we have videos of uh, Oxbridge students and our own mentors talking through interview questions, kind of breaking them down and helping you um, understand the kind of thinking that a tutor might be looking for in a question. So that's really useful. We've also got kind of uploaded webinars just like this one that you can look at to find out more if you need more after today. And then lastly, if you look at our website, which I'll put in the chat afterwards, you can find a blog that we've just launched where you can find kind of really inter interesting um, articles about Oxbridge about careers and also you can find our content contact details thank you awesome thanks Emma and Oxbridge launchpad please Kavi thanks Simon hi uh, hi everyone my name is Kavi um, I'm from the Oxbridge launchpad and we're a non-profit organization that helps students like you get into Oxford and Cambridge for completely free um, and there are three resources we have to offer you guys um, Firstly, is a very similar resource to what's just been discussed, and that's a one-to-one -one mentoring programme where we'll link you up with a student that studies your subject at Oxford or Cambridge, and they'll mentor you on a weekly basis about all things Oxford and Cambridge, so the work, the life. We also do mini sort of supervision style um, mentor sessions where you'll, they might give you some like an essay or, or, a, or a reading to read beforehand, and then you'll discuss it in the supervision. Um, which is very similar to the format at Oxford and Cambridge. And then secondly, we also have a unique blog called the Oxbridge Intelligence, where we get students at Oxford and Cambridge to write academic articles about their subject. So you can see exactly sort of what the standard is and what you're expected to know for your subject. And it's a really good thing to read before your interview if you want to get up to speed with your topic and your subject. And then finally, we have what's called the Information Hub, where we have everything from how to write a personal statement to how to choose a college, 
um, you know, what the colleges look like at Oxford and Cambridge. So I'll, I'll drop the link in the chat below. I'd really encourage you to take a look at our website to see where we can help you out. Um, but yeah, definitely get involved. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kavi. Uh, Infuse. Uh, Hi. Dylan? Yeah, thanks, Norman. Uh, I'll keep it really quick. Um, yeah, so we are an outreach initiative that is planning a five day program in summer with sessions um, all throughout the week, um, around five hours a day. Um, it's free, student led, uh, and exclusive. The sessions are going to center around the admissions process. Um, and what makes us quite unique is that we're going to sort of run sessions around life at Oxbridge, you know, diversity sessions, funding available. Um, and we're going to partner with societies and clubs at the two institutions so that they can tell you a little bit more about what to expect. Uh, we're going to have careers sessions. So we're going to have professions from around a, a range of different sectors, lawyers, bankers, consultants, um, hopefully politicians that we're in talks with, partnering with. Um, yeah, so where possible, we will assign you to not only just a mentor studying your course of interest, but with a mentor at the university you intend to apply to. Um, yeah, um, so far we've already partnered with YouTubers, vloggers, podcasters, with the aim of partnering with many more uh, that are scattered throughout the university. Uh, we're in sort of the process of negotiating a partnership with a high profile politician, which is yet to be confirmed. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a really helpful um, uh, session. It's going to be really helpful sessions for all students to get a little bit more information about how to apply. Um, it's going to be in August, so it's quite well situated to help with um, the sort of uh, year, incoming year 13 students in applying to Ox Oxbridge. Um, it's available to both Oxford and Cambridge uh, prospective applicants. And just to emphasize, it's completely free. Um, yeah, so I encourage you to um, visit our website, which I'll put in the chat right now. Um, on there, it'll be apparent on how to um, make an application. Um, I'll send it, you have to send it to the email that's on there. I'll also put the email on the chat as well. Um, so yeah, um, I will also attach an application form onto the chat as well for anyone having trouble with the website. Um, but yeah, any questions at all as well, please reach out to the email as well and we will get an answer to you as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, thank you, Naaman, for this amazing event and Zoe. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, and Ellie from Inside Uni. Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Ellie. I work for Inside Uni, which is a free website which offers crowdsourced student advice on making your application to Oxbridge. Since we launched in 2018, over 2,500 students from across Oxford and Cambridge universities have contributed to us, and that includes interview testimonies, which outline their experience at interview and the kind of things they, they wish they knew and the advice that they would have to you going forwards. We also offer subject guides, which consider the kind of resources and things that you might want to think about if you're considering making an application to study a particular subject. And more specific course guides, which cover the courses at Oxford and Cambridge. They cover every single undergraduate course at both of the universities, and they have been written by students for incoming students. And they include things that they might have used on their personal statement, or that have been handy during their first or second year of their course, which they think might be also useful to you as a prospective applicant. We also have some really great YouTube videos. So our YouTube channel, just Inside Uni again, um, over last summer, we did some great Q&A videos with some wonderful students from both Oxford and Cambridge about their experience as applying from um, various backgrounds, as um, a student who's done a gap year, a disabled student, students um, who have applied from other countries around the world and not just the UK. Um, last year we reached um, 25,000 people which was great. Um, I will pop our website link into the chat and we would love if you would come over to our website and, and use our content. Um, but that's pretty much it so thank you Naman and Zoe for having me. I think you cut out at the end of it. Thank you so much Ellie. Uh, project Access, is Jenny here? Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Naman. Um, I'm Jenny. I'm from a team member at Project Access. We're also a nonprofit organization founded in 2016. And what we are doing is um, at our heart is basically just providing mentoring, um, individual mentoring to students, specifically to international students. Um, so this is what we are sort of tailoring to. And that means that students will get um, ideally a mentor from their own country applying for their subject at their dream university. 
Um, in addition to this mentoring service, we also assign people to programs, which is where they will get timed and tailored content. So specific to the stage you are in and um, also offers sort of a community to our mentees where they can engage with other um, mentees in their application cycle and also have access to certain resources that uh, our mentors have written. Um, what is quite interesting, I guess, is that we are not tailored towards just Oxbridge, but also offer uh, mentors from London unis, for example, LSE, KCL, Imperial, uh, but also um, Warwick and Durham. And what is also interesting is that we have different programs, not only depending on whether you apply to the UK, but we also have contacts um, and mentors at US Ivy League universities, um, not just Ivy Leagues, but also others. And we, are, we have been recently expanding to EU unis as well. So for example, uh, ETH Zurich, um, Sciences Po in uh, France or Bocconi in Italy. And we also uh, lastly have a, something called Access Academy, which is also just a collection of webinars, uh, articles um, and videos, which are also open to anyone. So it would be also interesting um, to anyone here. And also lastly, sorry, that's the last thing, which is also interesting for all the mentors, international mentors here, is that we also provide graduate and postgraduate mentoring. So if you're looking at for a master's um, or a PhD degree. Brilliant, thanks so much, Jenny. And yeah, last but not least, UniReach. Uh, do you want to talk about this, Zoe? Yeah, so UniReach, formerly Oxpath, is a student-led charity that connects current Oxford students with prospective applicants within 24 hours to provide free tailored admissions advice and support. Mentoring calls are usually up to 30 minutes long and may cover topics including personal statements, admissions tests and interviews. Students may choose their own availability and request sessions as many times as they like. Our tech stuff is going to um, be live in April, so feel free to use it then. Um, this past admission cycle, our surveys of UniReach applicants found that 80% of respondents received an interview and 57% received an offer, almost two times and over three times higher than typical Oxford interview and offer rates respectively. 98% of UniReach applicants said that they would use our services again. You can follow us on Insta at unireach.co.uk for more insight into Oxbridge life and the application process, including topics such as diversity at Oxbridge, how to pick a university and imposter syndrome. And of course, if you have any follow-up questions from today, which you didn't get a chance to ask or they weren't answered in time, then do email us, um, team at unireach.co.uk or you can direct them to the Insta and I will do my best to answer them or we'll forward them on to the correct person. Awesome. Uh, I just add that we're going uh, live with, so our program is currently um, stopped running because for and is going to be running again for the next admission cycle in April with Oxford and Cambridge. So look out for that and make sure to, to make use of us. All of the services we've talked about today from all of the partner organizations are completely free and they're designed to help students like you guys. So thank you so much for, for coming today. We hope this event was uh, really useful for you. We just have three tips uh, for your overall application. Um, firstly, be yourself. There's no need to, to change who you are. And I hope you've seen this from today um, to, to get into Oxbridge. There is no Oxbridge type and Oxbridge really is for everyone. Secondly, use the help. OK, don't feel um, afraid to make use of the resources available to you. There's you know, all of these partner organizations offering you these things for free. Make use of it uh, and help to make you the best uh, applicant possible. And thirdly, it's going to be a stressful one, I, I can't lie to you, but it's going to be hopefully a very enjoyable journey. And hopefully at the end of it, you'll have a place at Oxbridge. But even if you don't, I'm sure you'll be at a really great uni and really happy uh, with how you've grown and become you know, a better person through the process, uh, a more resilient person too. So thank you so much for coming today. I hope this has been useful. Uh, make use of our services. And if you have any questions, especially if you got cut off, uh, just email us at team at, Oxpap, team at unireach.com. Code at UK and we'll forward them on. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.